Welcome to the second episode of Hacking the Web App Developed by My Brother. As promised in the previous episode, I will be sharing some vulnerabilities that, when chained together, could lead to a full account takeover. Again, the full session of this hacking will be available for members of this channel. Watch the entire hacking from start to finish and support the channel along the way. Let's get started. The app offers the possibility to create um, game offers which contain the price, as I explained in a previous episode. So I tried a negative number in the price field and it worked. However, I don't really think or see any security risks here because the app does not handle payments and such an offer would be reported quickly by other users anyway. So it's really important to evaluate the risk as you go because it allows you to focus on the vulnerabilities that hurt the most. So I quickly noted it for my report and moved on to vulnerabilities that most of you love to find. Yep, cross-site scripting. If you don't know what it is, I suggest you first go through the web hacking playlist here. It's free and uh, it will get you started quickly. You probably remember from the previous episode that the app supported a forum. When creating a topic in the forum, users can choose from a list of predefined games. So my brother was smart enough to properly protect the input fields. And I was really, really proud of that. For a first app, I must really applause. Well, he protected most of them, but forgot the game parameter. I guess he thought a drop-down cannot be tampered with. Well, for the game, uh, I thought it was that it was secure enough because, well, for, for most users, they cannot man manipulate it. Bro, now you know that everything client-side can be poisoned. Never trust user input, even if it's drop-downs. I was able to run arbitrary JavaScript code in any web browser that visits the forum's page. In your opinion, what can you achieve with this cross-site scripting? Let your imagination go wild and comment below with creative ways. I will comment back to anyone who comes with an outside-the-box scenario. The same parameter was also present when creating an offer. However, it does only trigger in the user's dashboard. This is known as a self cross-site scripting, meaning the attacker can only target themselves. Or do they? Stick around until the end to see if you can find a way to chain it with another vulnerability and elevate it to a stored cross-site scripting. Always on the offers features, but this time I tried modifying the one I created. I quickly spot the offer ID in the parameter. With time, you get an eye for such things. When I swapped the offer ID with the, another I did not create, refreshed the page, and the offer got updated. A classic example of an IDOR vulnerability. But remember, you should always aim for the maximum impact to demonstrate the highest security risk and get the highest reward. Think of a way to leverage this vulnerability to take over another user's account. If you want a hint, drop me a comment. When you spend enough time with your target, you get comfortable with the features. You understand where things can go wrong from a business standpoint, and you try to push beyond the technical bugs you typically find in every web application. In this case, the vulnerability was in the topic flagging feature. See, when you report a topic, the button disappears. So my brother checked if the user already reported a topic, but he forgot to check it when actually clicking on the button. Basically, you can replay the request to flag any topic as many times as you want, which ranks the topic higher in the admin reporting queue, therefore increasing the chances of the topic being deleted. This vulnerability is typically found on web applications that don't use a web framework. I purposely pushed my brother to develop his first web application from scratch, to really understand how things work, to make mistakes that will help him get the added value of web frameworks. 
Therefore, I knew I will find some CSR vulnerabilities. Others may call it CSRF or cross-site request forgery. And I knew I would find some of them because they require manually managing the anti-CSRF tokens. But I was surprised to see that my brother implemented a recapture for the authors and the topic creation, which technically prevents this vulnerability. It was merely there for, to prevent uh, spammers from spamming content. However, all the forms available to moderators and admins were vulnerable. That was a really nice exercise for my brother because, you know what? He learned how the vulnerability works and patched it on a real use case, a use case that he himself created. That is to say that no matter how much you read how things work, you have to practice if you want to learn ethical hacking. I'm now more than convinced that building your own things is as crucial as breaking. Once my brother saw how I exploited the features he developed himself, not only did he instantly understood the flow, but he was also able to patch them. I'm really proud of him, and he demonstrated a real ability to learn by himself and build a fully working web application from scratch. It was a pleasure testing his first web application. And uh, thank you for making me a part of uh, your project and asking me to test it for security bugs. Well. <laughs> Thank you also for helping me throughout the journey. It was my pleasure because someone who've got uh, quite decent knowledge of cybersecurity is really important in a team. If you want to be a better ethical hacker, build the things you want to break. Stay curious, keep learning, and go find some bugs.